From the moment we laid eyes on Hinata Shoyo, there was only ever one dream that he chased. One dream that inspired him to no end. One dream that defined his entire journey. One dream that began the story of Haikyuu. That dream was to stay on the court longer than anybody else, to play volleyball at the highest level. And in Hinata's mind, there was only one way a short player like him could fulfill that dream. There was only one path that he could take. That path was to become the Little Giant. After all, it was the Little Giant of Karasuno who had inspired him to play volleyball in the first place. It was the idea of the Little Giant who kept him going when nothing else could. But what does it even mean to be a Little Giant? Well, it means to be like a force of nature itself, a symbol of power and skill like no other. In other words, to be the Little Giant, you had to be the Ace. However, the sad reality is that sometimes who we want to be is not who we're meant to be. It takes a true competitor and player to not only come to that realization, but embrace it, accept it. To let go of the very thing that inspired you, to let go of one of many dreams in order to fulfill that one dream, is the mark of an exceptional athlete, an exceptional person. That's why, in my opinion, the moment Hinata Shoyo gave up on being the little giant was the moment he became one of the greatest anime protagonists of all time. Ever since he was a kid, Hinata wanted to be the little giant. That's who inspired him to play volleyball and that's who inspired him to join Karasuno. To him, who had no formal training, no coach, no proper teammates for most of his life, this title, this position, was the only thing that kept him going. The idea that a short player could be as mighty as a tall one was Hinata's saving grace. However, Kageyama Tobio thought otherwise. After all, while Hinata was absorbed in his hunger to become the ace, Kageyama had noticed what he was actually good at. Distractions, deceptions, surprises, tricks. His passion attracted blockers towards him, and pair that with his inhuman speed, zipping around from one corner to another, jumping to the net before anyone could expect him to, you get a guy who could score from anywhere at any time, while also creating opportunities for his teammates. He was not powerful and he was not intimidating. Hinata Shoyo was not a good little giant, but he was a great decoy. And we all remember when Kageyama first gave him that nickname, the greatest decoy, Hinata didn't like it at all. At the time, he didn't know the bliss of indirectly scoring a point, so he couldn't comprehend the value of such a role. Yet, over time, as he began to get better and better, as his distractions led to decisive wins and amazing plays, Hinata saw the appeal in that playstyle. He began to appreciate it, he began to value it, and he began to better himself at it. However, he didn't completely make it his own until he reached the quarterfinals of Nationals. This is my favorite game in all of Haikyuu, and the game that showed us the true potential of Hinata Shoyo. This is Karasuno vs. Kamomedai, Hinata vs. Hoshiyumi. When I first started reading this game, I fully expected this match to be the one where Hinata would get completely destroyed. I mean, from the moment Hoshiyumi was introduced, Furudate-sensei foreshadowed that this guy was leagues better than Hinata in every possible way. He was just a little bit taller than Hinata, he jumped higher, and he got invited to the national training camp. From his serves, to his power, to his receives, to his spikes, Hinata was outclassed. Yet, I was completely blown away when I realized that we had been made. I'm sure that as we watched Hoshiyumi's introduction, most of us were thinking, damn, I can't wait for Hinata to do that someday. I can't wait for Hinata to get that good. And that's because we expected Hinata to be a little giant someday. The truth was that both Hinata and I believed that the greatest decoy was a temporary role, a placeholder. 
I feel like a lot of us, as well as Hinata, thought that over the years, as he got better and better at volleyball, he would eventually leave that behind. He would eventually become the ace, the powerhouse that tooled blocks and fought head-on, rather than sneaking around and playing clever tricks. He was only being the decoy for now because he wasn't good enough to be the ace, right? Hinata would obviously become the little giant at some point, right? But the truth is, this whole time, Hinata was much, much better than we thought he was, just not as a little giant. After all, once the game begins, we see that Hinata and Hoshiyumi are actually neck and neck. Hinata scores the first point for Karasuno, and Hoshiyumi replies by scoring the first point for Kamamedai. Yet, if you pay close attention, both of those points were completely different from each other. They were completely different playstyles. Hinata used his speed, getting to the net before the blocker so that there was no one in his way, while Hoshiyumi got to the net at the same time as the blockers, but blasted the ball straight through them. And the more the game progressed, the more I realized that Furudate Sensei had fooled us all. After all, Hinata was keeping up with Hoshiyumi. He was scoring just as many points and creating just as many opportunities, despite the foreshadowing that Hoshiyumi was infinitely better than Hinata. I mean, technically speaking, Hoshiyumi was better individually, but Hinata's playstyle made up for that. Kamameda is probably the best blocking team in Japan, whose blockers are always calm, collected, and thinking. Yet, as the game progresses, we see that Hinata is playing mind games with them, patiently slowing down, blending in, then suddenly speeding it up and throwing them off. This was no simple tactic. This was no simple play. At this point, Hinata Shoyo had become the master of deception, constantly keeping his opponents on edge. When some of the greatest volleyball minds have trouble keeping track of you, have trouble understanding your very intentions, you know you're good. Not to mention, Hinata was using this entire game to practice putting together his speed and his newly developed boom jump, which was evolving at a ridiculous pace. By the third and final set, Hinata was jumping just as high as Hoshiyumi, and in my opinion, once he finally pairs that jump with minus tempo, he's reaching that peak even before Hoshiyumi. No matter how you look at it, Hinata at that very moment was giving Hoshiyumi a run for his money. Hinata was playing on the same level as a little giant. Like Shira Torizawa said or puts it, in order to be a good decoy, you have to be a good spiker first, because that's what makes the blockers second guess their decisions. Being the greatest decoy didn't mean being less of a point scorer than a little giant. It was just a different way of going about it. It was a different way of playing volleyball. After all, there isn't only one strength for a short player. There isn't only one path. This isn't all there is to their strength. As the ball enters the Kamomedai court, it's clumsily received by their setter, and now someone else has to create an opportunity. Well, who better than the little giant himself? Almost as perfect as some of the best setters in Japan, Hoshiyumi sets the ball up for his teammate, who smashes it into the Karasuno court. After all, to hone every single weapon in one's arsenal and execute it better than the tall monsters. That's what it meant to be the little giant. However, the play isn't over yet. Nishinoya keeps the ball alive, sending it to Kageyama, and there was only one man who could finish the job. Before anyone can even react, the tiny crow takes flight, reaching a height that surpasses even that of the blockers. And for the first time in this entire game, the calm, collected, and immovable wall of Kamomedai is shaken by this little man. As Hirugami takes a step towards Hinata, he falls for the trap. He falls for the decoy. Kageyama sends the ball to Tanaka instead, who slams the ball down with his iconic cross shot. However, Tanaka may have spiked that ball, but Hinata was the one who scored it. Yusa! 
And then came a moment that I will never forget. The moment that I never saw coming, but the moment that touched my soul like no other. Hinata says, I thought it would be cool if I could be like them. But, you know, even as I keep learning how to do more new and different things, I think if someone were to give me a nickname, I want to be called the greatest decoy. When I first read this sequence, I couldn't say anything for a few minutes. So very rarely have I come across a character this real, this relatable. To see this guy I've been following for years, to see him let go of that inspiring dream from his childhood, that one sliver of hope that helped him push through all odds, to see him give that up in order to evolve, in order to become the best version of himself, is just remarkable. It's perfect. After all, sometimes you have to let go of who you want to be in order to become who you're meant to be. Before the game even began, we actually got a hint that Hinata didn't want to be the little giant anymore. And that was when he met his hero. When Hinata met the guy who inspired him to start playing volleyball. When Hinata met Tenma Udai, the original little giant. And then when Hinata asked Tenma what team he played for now, what league he played in, Udai simply said, I don't play volleyball anymore. He had stopped playing volleyball after high school. It's kind of a shocker considering his legacy and his impact on Hinata, and I'm sure a lot of us felt a bit disappointed and expected Hinata to be disappointed as well. Yet, after this conversation, there comes a beautiful panel. One that I didn't understand in my first read, but one that I now see as the biggest hint for Hinata's future. It's the panel where he tells Kageyama, I thought it would be really cool if I could be like him, but I wonder why. I don't feel disappointed at all. At the time, Hinata himself didn't understand why he wasn't disappointed. He knew it in his heart, but he couldn't verbalize those emotions. Whether Hinata realized it or not, he didn't want to be the little giant anymore. After all, he had finally found his own path to stay on the court longer than anybody else. I know what it's like to let go of something you're inspired by, something you loved in order to better yourself, in order to reach your full potential. It's not easy, not in the slightest, but it's pretty damn real. This hit home really hard for me, and it was something that I hadn't expected to see in a million years. It was truly the moment that Hinata Shoyo became one of the greatest anime protagonists of all time. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, consider liking, subscribing, and all that good stuff. If you want to be a part of the community, be sure to check out my Discord server, The Rain Base, and also follow me on Twitter. Both links in the description below. Other than that, I guess I'll see you on the next one.